with Gavin Mitchell. He's got his own one-man show starting shortly, and tonight's a private view. I managed to creep in early before the crowds come in, just for Gavin and I to have a chat about his work and to have a look at some of the works that he's got here. So Gavin, thanks very much for inviting me along. Very welcome. Um, can you give me a little bit of background history about why you went down this road with particular Japanese art forms that you get? Um, it starts with a fascination of literature and film, which goes back a long way. Yeah. But um, I found a while back, I found some old postcards. A lot of my work evolves from found material. Yeah. Um, and dictates whatever I do, dictate, is dictated by the stuff I find. And I found some old postcards, Geisha postcards, very enigmatic pictures, yeah. Yeah. which my previous work was based on. And I did a culture clash of um, East meets West. And as a result of that, I started to dictate more through taking pictures of models myself yeah, yeah. and using the, the um, discovering the idea of wabi-sabi, which is the Zen form of art, which is about impermanence. Uh, in trend, um, it, it, it's the kind of form of relativity over absolutism. Yeah, yeah. West is about absolute beauty. Yeah, the yeah, East yeah. is about impermanence, transience. Yeah. Um, Hence the reason why you entitled this. Yeah, transient and transient. impermanence, there's lots of words around the idea, but basically the, the Eastern philosophy is much more the world, should we should be part of the world as opposed to being mm. taken to the world. Yeah. So this, the images in, in all the work, the sculptures, the prints, yeah. are about things that aren't quite what they seem or they're sort of disappearing into something, so there's no firm lines or anything. Yeah. But it juxtaposes the manga culture in Japan, which is very firm and very based on animation and anime, so there's a sort of a duality in the society. So I'm kind of trying to work out how Japan balances both elements. Because yeah. you, your work, a lot of it is printed by Genesis, and I've just been there this morning uh, speaking to Ken, and he really does a great job there at Genesis, isn't he, when he's printing? Yeah, yeah, no, it's allowed me. Um, I started off doing, um, you know, Gicle prints, which is such a, on fine art paper, which creates just such a perfect reproduction for the work I do, because mm -hmm. it's, the source material is so old, it kind of picks up yes. the genuine kind of, uh, the material, but recently um, I've been experimenting on glass, which I've been able to print through their Jetrix machine, yes. direct media printing onto glass, which opens up a whole new um, element for me to sort of discover layers of work, which is where, where I want to go. Yeah, it's amazing that printing process that it can print on any surface, really. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. yeah. And I think traditionally it was used very much on a commercial basis for outdoor hoardings, mm. but I think they and Genesis have identified that in the art markets, if it became a much finer, better quality, um, it's opened doors to all kind of mixed media artists like myself to yes. play around with all sorts of materials, wood, glass, which I use. Mm -hmm. So I mix it with um, sandblasting and acid etching yeah. and print on top of those. So it's actually been an amazing and very unique kind of result. Yeah. Well, perhaps you'd be so kind as to show me around some of the works here and what the sure. process is in. Yeah. Okay, so we're now moving on to one of uh, Gavin's sculptures. Um, is this something that you've been doing for a while, this style, or is this a new departure in what you've been doing? It's a new departure to make the work more three-dimensional, because I always try and create layers in my work. And yeah. uh, the, one, the one kind of limitation of a GK print is you, you're obliged to print as a flat print, yeah. although I try to get the dimension and the depth to it. So you've got a 3D process in yeah, this Yeah, and now. using and working with new materials. So I'm working with a metal worker on making these bases. Yeah. Uh, what back is this? It's steel. It's right. perforated steel, um, and that's unfinished. So actually, there'll be a patina that will start to sort of uh, not rust, but oh, have nice. a nice little sort of work. It will double yeah. down to yeah. its own. Oh, and uh, the wood choice of and wood. Then, yeah, this is all basically reclaimed by choice, uh, by chance in a, a reclamation yard. I find beams which I cut up. These ones actually, I split down the middle to have the natural crack yeah. down the middle of them. So they actually are the same beam, but with a natural. I like the fact you've there. got this gap in it. Otherwise, yeah. if it was just a thin. Yeah. Fact, wouldn't see anything. Exactly. I so, wish I could design that, but it was actually when we were doing the beam, we hit it accidentally and the whole thing split, so the three works. Happy were, accident. Yeah, it was a happy accident, which is a lot of best arts happy accidents. Exactly. Um, so I ended up making three from the same beam, and these natural cracks actually fall, and they follow each other. Um, and then the, the, the figures of your model are, yeah. sort of, are just printed onto the... Yeah, I'm using the, the Genesis machine, the Genesis, Jetrix, the, the uh, director yeah. media. Yeah. But all, the model actually was, um, I had tattoos on the model, which I then photographed and then printed on the end. So this is, this is kind of haiku poetry, which was tattooed onto the model's body, which you can actually see on the glass. But then I photographed the body 
and so, so these are following the line of the body, so that's the sort of the actual yeah. shape of the and that's a kind of abstract. The thing about Wabi Sabi or Haiku is it not, it should be read or permanent, it should be in, and it shouldn't be written down. A lot of Japanese people tell you they, they listen to poetry, they don't see it. So, yeah. so I'm learning as a Westerner in a kind of slight appropriated way and trying to adapt it into a Western kind of form for making people understand that work shouldn't be absent, it should have a, and that's why glass, printing on glass is great because there's no end to it, there's no frame to no, it. So there's no start or finish really? No. Which is the whole process of Eastern philosophy, yeah. really. Um, well, it's wonderful work. Yeah. And, and the, the other carving was really just to sort of work with the wood. And the, this actually word says transient in, in, um, in Japanese. And who did this for you then? Me. You did this? Yeah. yeah. It must be hard to. Uh... Yeah, it's good. It's a bottle of whiskey and good oh. music and some nice <laughs> sharp chisels. <Yeah. laughs> Don't try that at home, folks. <laughs> yeah, okay. Very true. Yeah, don't try that at home. Well, it's wonderful. Thanks very much. Very well. Thank you. Well. Thank you. And, and good luck. Thank you. Yeah, the show. Yeah. So it's from us. Goodbye for the night. Uh, happy painting, guys, and happy photography. Um, happy sculpting. And happy sculpting as well. Happy multimetering. Happy multimetering. Yes, the list is getting longer. Yeah, yeah, Each yeah, YouTube yeah. channel we do, we're adding more and more yeah, to it. Yeah. So join us next time. And for now, right. goodbye, guys. Thank you.